This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped is trusted by more than 9 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulations, and premium boxers, and their performance package 4.0 is a game changer when it comes to creating the ultimate men's grooming and hygiene bundle. Their fourth generation electric trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming accidents and has a 4,000 LED spotlight for when you need a more precise shave. Although your balls might look like a punching bag, don't treat them like one. You'll also get the Weed Whacker 2.0, the Crop Preserver deodorant, and the Crop Reviver toner spray. Simply apply the Crop Preserver after your shower for an all day body odor protection. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts in their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort in boxers to another level. Go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code JETSTALK20. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code JETSTALK20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! Welcome in. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, week one is finally upon us, and I'm oh so excited. I'm going to be in the crowd for week one, so if you're going to be at the Jets-Buffalo game on Monday night, let me know. Maybe you'll run into me, say hi, hello, whatever. But very excited. This is a huge, huge, huge game for the New York Jets. It's the first time we get to see Aaron Rodgers come out in a New York Jets uniform in the regular season. We're going up against a division rival who's won the division the last few years. We need to put our money where our mouth is. There's gonna be a lot of conversation if the Jets lose this game. Was the trade worth it? Oh my God, look at what happened to the Jets. They're the super team and now they can't do anything. I don't wanna hear it. And there's a really big critical, critical matchup that I wanna get into. And that is the offensive line and Gregory Rousseau, specifically Gregory Rousseau on that Bills defense. Now they have a really strong defense overall. Their secondary is no joke. But last year, the issue that the Jets had was Mr. Gregory Rousseau. Last year, two pressures from six different defensive players on the New York Jets offensive line. 12 pressures just across six guys. That cannot happen. Gregory Rousseau had four of those pressures, led the way for the Buffalo Bills, and he had two sacks, one of which was the strip sack of Joe Flacco, which we'll go into in just a second. And then the other one was a hit on Mike White that like put us in second and 20 or something crazy like that and effectively ended the game. So this guy was an absolute game wrecker against us last year, but it's a new matchup because we're not going to have Mike Remmers or whatever on the right-hand side. We're going to have Mekhi Becton on the right-hand side. So this matchup is going to be absolutely critical. So I want to take a look at this real fast and uh, hop over to the tape from last year. This is the play that I was talking about, and Becton has to stop this. If you look at number 50 right here on the edge, that's Gregory Rousseau. You're going to see him go up against our right tackle, and it does not end well. Not good at all. Hops off, oh, let me go around a little bit. Oh no, speed to power. Takes down Flacco, ball gets turned over, and it is Buffalo ball, watch this, fakes like he's running upfield, and then goes right at him, drives him straight back into the quarterback. He's tripping all over himself, guys falling over, and Flacco gets cracked ball comes out. That cannot happen. But the nice thing, when I see this play, and I know Makai Becton is going to be out on the field, this doesn't feel like a play that Makai Becton gives up. He's going to lock down. He's going to root his legs into the ground. I shouldn't say root, but he's going to he's going to be able to anchor that side of the line the way Gregory Rousseau was like. The way this pressure works, it's not going to cause Becton issues, I don't think. That type of move, Becton should be able to to maneuver relatively easily. So the type of rusher that Rousseau is, he's not necessarily a huge, huge speed rusher, which is something that Mekhi Becton has had issues with in the past. He hasn't played in two years. It's the first time we're getting to see him on the field, and he has trouble with that elite speed. We heard in training camp both last year and this year that Becton was struggling against Michael Clemens or Bryce Huff, and these guys are elite speed type edge rushers. So is Rousseau... Is Rousseau going to be too fast for Makai Becton? Remember, big guy, big guy. So I want to take a look at that. Per next-gen stats, the average get-off time for Gregory Rousseau 
0.86 seconds. League average is 0.88, so really not like that crazy. When you look at how he performed last year against the Jets' offense, I think that's more of a product of a poor offensive line or at least an offensive line that didn't consistently get to play together where they could pass off different blocks and maybe know the strengths and weaknesses of different guys. Like Remmers was kind of thrown in, what was he, like offensive tackle six <laughs> last year? So not real great. But like 8.6 seconds compared to 8.8 .8 as league average, I think Becton can handle that. And then because of that speed, his missed tackle rate per, per pro football focus, 19.4%. That was 65th of 88 edge rushers that qualified for that statistic. So if the Jets can really get into situations where they don't have to worry about a pass rush, like let's say you're running the ball really well, or at least you're in a position of strength where you are ahead in the game and you can you know, you're not dropping back a whole heck of a ton. Then you can play to Becton strength, which is run blocking him and AVT on the right-hand side. We've been wanting to see that forever anyway. And then you kind of neutralize, you know, the that left side, well, right side of the Jets offensive line, left side of the Bills defensive line. I think if you can keep Rousseau in check and you can keep Aaron Rodgers upright, especially getting the running game working, Cook and Hall need to have a day. And Hall coming off the injury, really Cook coming off an injury too. Neither one has really practiced a whole heck of a lot with the Jets. I get the feeling you're going to see a little bit more Dalvin Cook in week one than you may have otherwise seen if we had a healthy, fully healthy Brees. But I do think Brees is going to go. I think you're going to see probably 15, 10, 10 to 15 carries for each guy total. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be about 20 to 30 rushes. But if you can run the ball a lot because you are from, you are scoring points and you are ahead in the, uh, you know, the, the, not the win-loss column, the, the score column. If you're ahead there and the Bills can't tee off on your pass rush or with their pass rush against your offensive line, I think the Jets are going to be in a pretty good spot. Not to mention Aaron Rodgers under center is significantly different than Joe Flacco or Mike White or Zach Wilson. Like this dude's going to get the ball out fast, accurately, and is going to diagnose defenses stupid fast. So I'm not that concerned, but this is definitely a critical matchup Guys, let me know in the comments section, is this the key matchup? Becton versus Rousseau, or is there another matchup somewhere on either the offensive line, the defensive side for the New York Jets? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets!